Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to The Board Meeting. Today, we're doing another reviews and ratings episode where I review and rate all the different games I've played in the past two weeks with friends, family, and even solo. Today, we've got nine games on the docket that we're going to be talking about. We're going to start with my least favorite, go into my favorite. I'm going to give a short overview, give a short review, and give my final rating of all of these different games. And if you watch my reviews and ratings episode from a couple weeks ago, I had a lot of good games on that. So if you want to check that one out, definitely check that out that one after this one. This one is a lot more spread out compared to that one. I've got some really bad games but I'll, and some average games and some really good games on this one. So uh, let's just jump right into it. And we are going to start with one of the worst games I've played this entire year. This is the Office Downsizing Game. This is a social deduction game with the Office IP thrown on top of it. This is a social deduction game in the same realm as Werewolf, Secret Hitler, Resistance, Avalon, all of those, those types of games. It's, it's kind of the same structure, but worse in every possible way. And I'm not even really gonna get into the game of it, but it has a horrible rule book. There's no credited designer. And here's a little hint. If you see a game that doesn't have a credited designer on it, that's a modern game, there's a very good possibility that game is going to be straight up trash because it's just going to be a money grab. And that's what this one feels like is they threw the office IP on top of it and it's just, hey, we'll sell a lot of this game because it's got the office. And I'm sure they've sold a lot of this, this game to a lot of people just based on the office because it's such a popular IP or popular, you know, show. But it's just, it is the, probably the worst social deduction game I have ever played. Um, so it's going to get a two rating. I would absolutely recommend any other social deduction game besides this one. If, if you mention the social deduction game, play that one instead of this one. Any of them. Because this is the worst one I've ever played. And like I said, I'm not even going to talk about the actual game because there's no sense to it. So yeah, two rating for The Office Downsizing Game. Going to the next game. The next game is Totem, which is also another game that doesn't have accredited designer on it. This is definitely not as bad but it's definitely not that great of a game. But in this game, it is an abstract sort of game where you control a certain color pieces and you are trying to make your pieces go to the other side of the board. That's how you win the game, is having all your pieces on the other side. And there is going to be a, a starting color out there that you cannot move your pieces onto. So you're going to move as far as you can in a straight line with your pieces, trying to make it to the other side, but you have to stop before you get to that one color. You can move on to these other pieces that change the color that you can't be on and it's basically just that trying to make it to the other side without moving across those particular colors. I found it really dull and boring to be honest. I didn't think it was going to be that boring to me but I found no excitement in this game for myself so it is going to get a four rating. It's twice as good as the office game but still not one that I would recommend and another game that doesn't have a designer. So four rating for Totem. Going to the next game. The next game is Ingenious, which is actually by uh, Reiner Knizia. This is an older game of his. It's an abstract tile laying game where you're going to be laying out these tiles that are sort of dominoes-ish. They're going to have colors on them. And you're going to be laying these tiles onto this bigger board, trying to get the same type of colors that you're laying around that those tiles to get points. So if you've got it like five or six of these colors, of like the red around the red when you lay it down you're going to get like six points for the red and you're going to move moving up tracks for all of your different colors if ever you reach the end of one of the track you get to actually go again and at the end of the game once either a player has moved all of all of their colors all the way to the right which is almost impossible to do or if you just can't lay tiles down anymore because you ran out of space which is more than likely the person wins who has the highest value on their lowest colored track. So if you might, you know, you take a look at all of your colors and say red is your lowest one, that's gonna be your score. So you wanna get all of them moved up pretty good in this game. It's gonna get a six rating. Um, it's a family friendly game. I wouldn't mind if someone asked me to play this, I would play this one with, with them gladly. It's, it's a very inoffensive game to me, but it's not one that I'm going to bring to the table. It's not one that I'm going to recommend for people because I think there's better family style games, but it's, it's very, it's very simple, very straightforward, just tile laying game. So six rating for Ingenious. Going to the next game. The next game is the Princess Bride Adventure Book Game 
which is the first game in the adventure book games. There's this one, The Princess Bride. There is The Wizard of Oz. And there is Lord of the Rings. They are, are all based on the movies. So this one is based on The Princess Bride. And they are cooperative, cooperative, very simple, light, lightweight games. And they follow along with the movie. So this one is a six, six scenario game where I think Lord of the Rings was eight. I have not played the Wizard of Oz one. But on your turn, you are going to be moving your characters, any of the characters that you control, zero to two spaces. Then you're going to be playing out these cards that are basically resources. They're going to have different symbols on them. You're going to be moving other characters, trying to do whatever the scenario is, completing the different objectives for that game. These are very, very simple games. I gave the Lord of the Rings one an 8 rating, not only because I think it was a, a pretty solid game, but it also had the IP, my favorite my favorite movies of all time, Lord of the Rings. The Princess Bride is my girlfriend's favorite movie of all time. I'm enjoying playing through this one. It's going to get a 6.5 rating. The reason why it's lower than Lord of the Rings, not only is the IP is not one that I like, but more so is that the puzzles aren't nearly as good, I don't think. And this was the first game in the series of games, so I feel like they've kind of worked on it and made them better. You know, the Lord of the Rings puzzles were just more interesting, where there's been a couple of the puzzles in the Princess Bride game where it's it's too simple, it's too straightforward. It's like, you have to go to this spot and turn in these colors, these colors of cards. And you're like, well, that's that's not really much of a puzzle. You just go to those spots. So, but there are some interesting scenarios in this one. It's just that some of them, some of the scenarios are just plain boring, I think. But 6.5 rating for the Princess Bride Adventure Book Game, I'm still, I, I, I enjoyed, I'm enjoying playing through that one at least. Going to the next game. The next game is a chip theory game. This is 20 strong. This is a dice, a simple dice rolling game. And this is actually the, my first chip theory game that I've played. I have too many bones on my shelf for the last several months, but it's just an intimidating game. This is not an intimidating game. This is a pretty simple, straightforward dice rolling game. And it feels, if you like one deck dungeon, this has a lot of similarities to that particular game. You are, have a resource pool of all these different dice. And each each turn you have to fight one of these enemies that you, you, know, you choose. You're bringing this person in. Then you choose how many dice you want to roll against this enemy. They have so many hits that you're trying to get. At the end of that, you lose those dice, but you can take some of them back, depending on a certain stat of yours. You can take a couple of them back into your pool. Each of the enemies have different powers. Um, they might get you bonuses for defeating some of them. But this is a very straightforward game. This is going to get a 7 rating. I, I'm really comparing it a lot to One Deck Dungeon, what I, which I haven't heard a lot of people talk about when they've talking about this game. But to me, it feels like that game, but I think it's better. There are some interesting monsters that you're versing, and then at the end of the, each game, you have to fight this boss. But you have a bunch of different items by that time that give you are pretty powerful, and it's really fun manipulating your dice in a certain way. You're like, I'm going to defeat this enemy, which the bonus is going to get me all of these dice back, and all of them have different stuff. Uh, the reason why it's only getting a 7 rating and not higher is I don't think there's a ton of replay value. This is a system more than a game because there I think there are three different systems that you can play for this. I've got the Solar Sentinels one, but I think there's like a Too Many Bones one and a Hoplomachus or whatever that game is called one. So there's it's like a system. I've only got the one game version of this, and I've played it like three, I think I played it three times. By my third play, I'm like, yeah, it's this monster again, you know. So I don't think it has a ton of replay value, but I had fun playing through it. It's pretty fast. I was playing through it in like 25, 30 minutes, mostly. So yeah, seven rating for 20 strong. Going to the next one. The next one is a two-player tug of war game. This is Royal Visit, which is an older game that got rethemed. I think this is a Reiner Knizia game as well. Um... But in this one, it's tug of war, two players only, and you are trying to, there's a bunch of different pieces on this cloth mat. There is two guards, there's a king, there's a joker, and then there's a wizard, or there's a jester, not a joker. And you are trying to get the guard and the king on your farthest most spots, on your particular side of your map. 
and you're going to be manipulating how these characters are moving throughout the game by playing out cards. On your turn, you can play out all the same types of cards. So if you can play all guard cards or you can play all, all jester cards. The jester and the wizard have different special abilities. The guards actually have to stay on the outside of where the king is. They can be far apart from the king, but they just can't both be on one side of the king. They have to be on the outsides of him. So you're just trying to manipulate the cards in some way that you can get the king and the and the guard on your part, your farthest end of this game. Um, this is going to get a 7.5 rating. I enjoyed this more than I thought I was going to, actually. Uh, if you like tug-of-war style games, this is one that I would really recommend for you. I enjoy tug-of-war games, but a lot of times when I'm playing them, I feel like I'm more... I'm definitely more reacting to what other people are doing rather than me doing what I want to do. It's like, oh, I want to do this. And you do a particular move and you're like, well, I have to play this in order to stop you from winning. Because that's just how the nature of tug of war games. And that can be a little bit, it's kind of a little bit of a downside for me. Like me forcing me to play this particular way. But I still enjoyed it. I, I still like it a lot. So 7.5 for Royal Visit. Going to the next game. The next game is a big, giant, skirmish-type game. It's right behind me, actually. This is Super Fantasy Brawl, which I've wanted to play for quite a while. I've had it for a while. Finally, this last weekend, I learned it, played a few games of it. In this game, you are going to control three different of these champions. Each champion has a deck of cards, which is like six different cards. And you're going to shuffle those up, you know, uh, smash-up style. And then you're going to draw five cards. And you're going to be trying to play these cards that pertain to particular characters that you're controlling. And you are trying to uh, defeat your opponents, kill them, which they just come back automatically. When you when you destroy an opponent, they, you get one point. You're trying to get to five points. But there are also objectives that you're trying to play, to, trying to accomplish throughout this game, like area control. You know, like you have to control this yellow area. You have to have two people adjacent to this spot. Stuff like that for the objectives. And you're going to be playing these cards and spending resources. And you have three different resources in this game, one of each color for this round. I think there's red, blue, and yellow. So if you've got a red card of this particular character, you're going to have to ex uh, use up this red use resource to play that particular card. And you just do whatever the card says. It's mostly moving, attacking, doing different effects. All the different characters have different abilities. They play a little bit different. I had fun playing this one. This one's going to get a 7.5 rating from me. And this is, out of all the games that I'm going to be talking about today, this one has a chance to move up. I feel like all the other games, I have a pretty good grasp about what I feel about those particular games. This one, I'm like, I've played three different characters, well, three different times, and you get a bunch of different characters. I've got two expansion sets that are in this one that I've bought in. I bought it on Miniature Market, and it was really cheap, actually, to get the base game and the two expansions because some big sale I got them with. But each of the characters feel very different, so I'm excited to explore this game more. There are a couple things that I'm not really a big fan of, is that resources in this. Because if you, if you draw five cards and they're all red cards that you need to use red resources, you only get one red resource each single turn. So it, it's kind of luck based but it's fast enough where it's not the the end all be all for this particular game i'm talking like 30 minutes which is really surprising for this big giant game with big giant cool miniatures i'm excited to explore this game more so 7.5 rating with a chance of it going even higher all right let's go to the next game we go from this big giant game to a little card game this is dragon keepers in this game you are going to be taking these dragons into your hand and then playing them out to score points, to grab these, these point tokens. So there are two different types of piles in this game. So you're going to take a dragon from one or the other. On your turn, you can take anywhere from one to three dragons. As soon as you take a dragon, a new one is revealed from that particular pile. At the end, after you've taken the dragons that you want to take, you, uh, it shows on the top of this book how many type or what type of dragon you need to be playing and how many of that type of dragon. So it might say three orange. So you have to play three orange dragons from your particular hand. But you can manipulate the piles, the books of this, because these cards are 
dual purpose. On the front side, it shows a dragon. On the back side, it either shows a dragon color or a number. So you can, you know, it might show like one white dragon that you need to play, but you could use some cards from your hand to play cards on top of the piles to manipulate it. And maybe now you need four green dragons and you're going to play these green dragons out in order to score those points. The points that you're getting are from these little tokens on the bottom. And starting away, you have to take the lowest ones. So you're probably going to take tokens that are worth one. And you're taking the lowest total value. So by the end of the game, you're taking ones that are, you know, 8, 10, 12, 14 points rather than the lowest ones because those get, you know, expelled. You, there's only so many of them. Uh, there are also different effects for the number of type of dragons you play. So if you play like five of a particular type, that's going to get you more stuff than if you're playing one of one type. I think the the reward for playing five of them is you get to take from the top pile rather from the bottom. So you're gonna start you're gonna start with like the twenties rather than starting with the ones. So that's a huge differential. Also, once you take three of these little point tokens, they form a medallion, and you're going to get extra points for those. The game ends once there is uh, it's different for different player counts, like seven for two players, eight for three, nine for four, I believe it is. This was a very, very surprising game for me. This one's going to get an 8.5 rating. I really like this one. I feel like this is a family-style game. There's only just that weird mechanic of it, of manipulating the piles at the end of your turn. It might be hard for you to explain to your family members that, you know, these cards are dual, you know, you can use them for dual purposes. Rather, play, rather than playing them for the dragon, you can use them for their ability on that back side to manipulate the piles for, for that particular round. Another thing that happens in the scheme that I really like is people can follow your action. So at the end of your turn, after you've played your dragons, say it's like two orange, the next person can also play two orange and get the rewards for that. So there's not any downtime really for this. You're always wondering what the other person is going to have. There are also a little bit, some other things happening in this game, but it's one of those games that it's really light rules, but heavy strategy. And I love that. So yeah. 8.5 rating for Dragon Keepers. This might end up sneaking into my top 10 games of 2023. I'm really, I'm really happy for this game. So yeah, 8.5 Dragon Keepers. Going to our last game of this of today, and it's it's a weird flicking game. This is Crokinole. I have wanted to play Crokinole for a very long time. It's a very popular, very old flicking style game where you have this board and each person has these little tokens that they're flicking onto the sport. On your turn, you are trying to get the tokens in the middle, uh, these discs in the middle, those are gonna be worth more points. But if you have, if the opponent has one of their discs on the board, you have to hit that, that their discs first. And if you don't hit them, you just take your, your discs off the board. If you hit multiple of your own without hitting theirs, you're going to have to take all of those discs off of your own. This one's going to get an 8.5 rating. I've wanted to play this forever. I finally got, I finally bought a board on Black Friday because it got on, went on sale because they are expensive. This was really, really fun. The reason why it's not higher, it, it could potentially be a 10, but the reason why it's an 8.5 is it has that chess issue for me where when I play someone of my same skill level, I have a blast and you can play this anywhere from two to four players. I have a, pl I have a blast. If I'm playing someone that is the same skill level as me. The problem with this is if you play someone worse than you or better than you by a substantial spot, it's it's not going to be very fun. You're just going to wipe the floor with them or they're going to wipe the floor with you. I want to play people who are average at this game. I don't want to pe play people who are worse or better than me because then it's not even going to be fun. But 8.5 because... The good is really good for this game. I'm excited to finally own one of these. I've wanted one for years. So yeah, 8.5 for Crokinole. A game I definitely check, recommend. Everyone should try this game out to see if it's a game that they would should have in their home. Uh, yeah, but that will complete this reviews and ratings episode. Make sure to comment down below uh, some of your thoughts on some of these games. If you played them, if you haven't, if you agree with me. If I'm totally, completely wrong about some of these games, let me know in the comments. But if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more weekly content from me, Shane, at the board meeting in the future. Hope you all have an amazing day. Take care.